Sheriff Joe Arpaio is dropping a bombshell on December 15th. There, he's going to have a big press conference presenting criminal evidence of fraud and a forged document, which is a federal offense. And this will not be about where Obama was born. No, this is going to be about who Obama's real father is. And we're joined again by Joel Gilbert. He is the writer and director of Dreams from My Real Father. And we were just talking about how the birth certificate, you know, I talked to Mike Zulo. We had a couple beers here locally one night, and he told me that this forged document was was even a sloppy job. It wasn't even a good forgery at that. And he said it was an amateur job. Yeah, I've mm. examined it. Uh, it is a terrible forgery. I mean, I, I think uh, if you're president of the United States, you can't put an ad on Craigslist saying, could I please have a, a document forger create a birth <laughs> certificate? You have to rely on someone very close to you who would probably lie in court and, uh, you know, make sure that that information never gets out. So I think he was stuck with a, uh, a very primitive uh, document forger because it really is a bad forgery. I've released two birth certificates today with InfoWars that show that you can just obviously see the difference between a very poor forgery and authentic uh, Hawaiian birth certificates from 1961. Well, this has been like the plague for the mainstream media as far as nobody will touch this story outside of alternative media. That's another reason why they, they label us fake news. Why the big cover-up and why both sides, why the right and left, how come they are both in on this? Is I've even heard Bill O'Reilly talk about, look, look, we know the birth certificate is authentic. Nothing to see here. So what's the deal? Uh, well, just to back up one second, you had people that took this to Congress and people in Congress, and they said, look, we know this document is very problematic, but we don't want to mess with it. Take it to the courts. People went to the courts. They said, I'm sorry, this is an electoral matter. Take it to Congress. Okay. Uh, then you had the media who was afraid to touch it. I think the conservative media was afraid to touch it for being accused of being racist for questioning Obama's uh, citizenship. Mm -hmm. In fact, no one really ever questioned Obama's citizenship. Uh, it was the authenticity of a document uh, that would reveal that his family background might not be what he says. I think I showed that rather than this uh, very wonderful family background he presented in his life story, Obama had a deeply disturbing family background with a, uh, a father who was a Soviet agent and radical communist uh, who, who radicalized him in, in his youth. Uh, the, uh, the unwillingness of anybody to question anything about Obama, don't forget. They, how much did they really question Obama for when he said the IRS, it's unacceptable that the IRS would uh, target anybody? No one ever really held him feet to the fire over that or fast and furious. Anything that Obama has wanted to do, people have been afraid to stand up, whether it's Obamacare or just about anything else, they have this fear of confronting Obama with the truth, asking simple questions that researchers have been trying to ask. And the media and the left very cleverly turned the question, you know, can you please release your college records, Senate records, birth certificate? They turned it into a weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you ask a question, you are, you believe in a religion called birtherism. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just another piece of evidence that the media uh, has died and no longer serves any purpose. Well, I want to hear more about his childhood and, and when he was a young adult. And I want to hear more about the, the uh, Hubba Hubba Strip Club and Honey Harlow. And do you think that, that she's the famous stripper who allegedly appeared with Obama's mom in those nude photos? Right. We obtained a lot of uh, nude photos that show Ann Dunham at Frank Marshall Davis's house. I went to his house uh, for the purpose of showing that there's a, a good chance of a relationship between Davis and Obama's mother. And uh, one of the four strippers in the photos, uh, I think, is very clearly Honey Harlow. Honey Harlow was a very famous stripper in the 50s, an actress, ex-wife of Lenny Bruce, the famous comedian. And uh, she lived in Honolulu all those years. And I think that's clearly her in the photo I've released today along with a picture of her at Hubba Hubba. Uh, Keith Kakagawa told me the stories about how Frank Marshall Davis would take Obama down to Hubba Hubba where Honey Harlow was the manager. Um, and uh, by the way, I forgot to mention in the other interview that uh, Obama's grandfather, Stanley, was the, an insurance agent. And he said that he was also the insurance agent for Hubba Hubba and that uh, he would get about a 10% kickback that would go to Frank. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, it was a very, uh, you know, intimate and nefarious uh, 
relationship between all these people for many, many years. And um, it just uh, shows how very different the reality is of Obama's upbringing is compared to the glossy picture he painted for us. Oh, it's almost, you know, reminds me of a Manchurian candidate. So we call him the ghost president, Manchurian candidate president. It's a little bit of a stretch, but he's not who he says he yeah, is. I call him the uh, radical in chief. There you go. That's a good description. Now, every once in a while, we've seen Obama in either press conferences or television interviews where he slips up and he mentions some revealing truth uh, of his past. And you discovered a, an interview where he talks about how he studied overseas. Tell us about that. Correct. Well, uh, I had suspected that Obama was not at Columbia for two years. He claimed he was at Occidental and transferred to Columbia. In a and we can't see the records. Yeah, no records. There's no such thing as a transfer program. He said he was in a transfer program. Columbia University, I spoke to uh, Henry Graff, 95 years old, was the head of the political science department at Columbia. And he said, look, Obama was not in any of my classes and in none of my colleagues' classes. How do you graduate from Columbia in political science if you never go to class? That's what he told me. <laughs> so it was clear that Obama was not there, uh, certainly not for two years. I discovered that in his senior year, he took uh, freshman courses, which showed that he was just filling out some requirements. And I gained a tremendous amount of evidence that showed that Obama, who was an international studies major at Occidental, went on a junior year abroad and lived in Pakistan, Pakistan. for his junior year. Now, Peter Geithner, the uh, father of Secretary of Treasury, uh, Peter Geithner, I'm sorry, uh, Timothy Geithner. Timothy, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Peter Geithner was the head of the Foreign Foundation in Asia, lived in Hong Kong, and Ann Dunham, Obama's mother, worked for Peter Geithner uh, those years. So I spoke to Peter Geithner about two years ago, and he told me that Obama had a scholarship from the Ford Foundation to go to Columbia in his senior year. So uh, with that bit of information, you put together all the pieces, and I'm certain that uh, Obama was abroad. His mother also lived in Pakistan during that year, and he slipped up when he spoke to Good Morning America. Are you concerned that your lack of experience when it comes to foreign policy uh, may hurt your chances in the run for the White House? Uh, well, actually, you know, my experience in foreign policy is probably more diverse than uh, most others in the field. I mean, I'm somebody who uh, has actually lived overseas, uh, somebody who has studied overseas. Uh, you know, I majored in international relations. Okay, so in that clip to Good Morning America, Obama said, I lived abroad and studied abroad, and that's why I know so much about international relations. Well, he certainly wasn't talking about being a four-year-old <laughs> going to kindergarten in Indonesia. You don't think they, they studied that? As having, that yeah. No, that terminology is the terminology that, uh, you know, junior year abroad students use that, that type of terminology. He slipped up. And he just kind of slipped up. So his affinity, this explains Obama's cultural affinity and political affinity with Islam and the Islamic world, living as an adult in a Muslim country. That's why he went to Egypt and used all that terminology in his first speech in Cairo about how, as president of the United States, his job is to defend Islam, talking about the Quran, the holy Quran. All this terminology and knowledge was not the knowledge of a four-year-old. It was the knowledge of someone who spent a year of his adult life uh, living in a Muslim country. Well, absolutely. And what gets me is we were talking earlier about the mainstream media being very critical of Donald Trump for getting his, his news and even his intelligence reports is how they phrase it from InfoWars. And when we talk about things like the birth certificate, we just didn't make up this conspiracy theory. No, we went, we sent our reporters to a press conference in 2012 from Sheriff Joe Arpaio and his cold case posse. These, this was a team of investigators and this is what these guys do. They investigate forgeries. They investigate frauds. They're the ones that held a press conference. We covered it. Joe Gilbert is an investigator. He's uncovered a lot of this information. So this really needs to be looked at. Joe Gilbert, you got the last word. Yeah, look, uh, look, the birth certificate is one small piece of the puzzle, which explains that uh, why Barack Obama had a radical presidency, open the borders, diminish American power abroad, abandon our allies, uh, force uh, government-controlled health care upon the United States. Uh, Obama learned in Chicago from his mentor, Bill Ayers, the terrorist emeritus from the Weather Underground, uh, he learned that you don't tell the truth. You look people in the eye and tell them you want to help working families. Mm -hmm. And when you get into office, you throw the electorate under the bus and pursue the agenda that no one voted for. And that's what happened to America the past eight years.
More than 20 years ago, when I started InfoWars, I was a fitness addict. As time went on, my metabolism slowed down. I quit working out. I was working 18 hours a day, and I gained right at 100 pounds. I started to exercise really hard again, and I started to try to eat healthy. Started taking third-party supplements. Started seeing some more gains. But when I started working with Dr. Group and some of the other top formulators in the country, they said, Alex, it's all about trace elements and things that the population is absolutely deficient in. Boom, weight started pouring off. Toxins started coming out of my body. Then, by early 2016, I was in the best shape of my life since I'd been in really good shape in my 20s. But the election heated up. I started working 14, 15, 16 hours a day. But more importantly, I stopped taking the supplements because we rearranged the kitchen and somebody took the Lazy Susan off the kitchen table where I took some every morning and I just kind of forgot about it. It was out of sight, out of mind. And so then I realized this morning, I said, we're going to put the Lazy Susan back on the table and I'm going to start taking it religiously again. And I'm gonna work out like I've been the last few weeks at the same level, it's a holiday, so I'll probably eat more. And whatever the results are, I'm gonna publish the findings. It's December 5th, 2016. We're only like 25 days from 2017. And I wanna invite all of the info warriors of every race, color, and creed that bleed red blood and love liberty, justice, and truth to make our bodies great again.